Hello everyone. If you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, one thing you might have noticed about me is uh, I kind of tend to like bad games. And I, I don't mean really bad games, like not not really horrible games. Like I mean, there are definitely some games that are so bad that even I don't like them. But you know how some people are really fond of B-movies? Like they're not that attracted to big Hollywood blockbusters with multi-million dollar special effects. They kind of like more of these sort of independent movies that are kind of kind of cheesy but you know have a, a certain charm to them because they're more kind of kind of handmade rather than made by a studio of thousands of people i'm the same way with computer games i mean i definitely love you know obviously i love sierra adventures um and you know other big you know relatively big budget games like that but uh, i i really have a certain fondness for um you know just just for for cheesy and and kind of games that are kind of bad in a in a sort of lovable way so, um, one company that became known for making kind of pretty bad adventure games was Capstone. Now, I have not seen a whole lot of videos on YouTube about Capstone adventure games, even though they made several adventure games. And so I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll just go ahead and just make a video about some Capstone games and just kind of feature them. Now. What ended up happening was, before making this video, I decided maybe it might be a good idea to, to sample the games a bit uh, before making the video. I, I thought, maybe I'll just go in completely blind, because these are all games that I've never actually played before. Well, except for one. There's one that I've played before, but the rest of these are games that I've never, ever played before. And I thought, maybe I'll just go in totally blind and not... Uh, you know, not have any sort of uh, preconceived notions about these games. And maybe what I would do, I have four games that I want to play in this video, and I thought, okay, you know, I have four games, so maybe what I'll do is I'll play each game for about 15 minutes. Then I've got an hour video, so hour-long video with four different games, about 15 minutes each. That seems uh, seems kind of like a nice little sort of montage of, uh, of games that I, you know, that I sort of wanted to feature here. Uh, but what ended up happening was I played all these games for uh, for a little while and what i realized was you know what these games are so bad i don't think i'll be able to stand playing them for 15 minutes each they're like even for me like i i freely admit i i love bad games in fact i'm, I'm it's, it's not something to admit like it's not something i'm ashamed of i actually like i, I actually like bad games like i say but these games are so bad they're too bad for me to enjoy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and play these games. Uh, like I said, they have four, I have four games. There are four games. I'm going to play them roughly in order from worst to best. Now, obviously, that's subjective. Let's say what I would consider, what I would say are the worst and best. So I'm going to start off with what I would say is probably the worst game of the four and then kind of work up from there and finish with what I would consider the best. Um, and I'll admit, this is going to be kind of a half-hearted video. Like, I, I didn't really put a whole huge incredible amount of thought and planning and production into this video. I mean, I usually don't. I usually don't do a lot of video production or anything. I just record and upload and that's 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 it. But I think I probably put a little less forethought into this video than even my usual videos that I do. But anyway, and I'm talking too much as usual. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the first game, which is, let's see, what directory did I put into it? I think I called it, Be yeah, there we go, the Beverly Hillbillies. Now, this game, um, yeah, it's sometimes cited as one of the worst games ever made, and I'm kind of inclined to agree. Let's see, I think I already did the configuration. So yeah, let's do ad lib. Uh, wait, no, Sound Blaster, sorry. Yeah, sorry, uh, I configured music for ad lib. Sound okay, so let me do that again. Sound Blaster and Sound Blaster, and I'll just keep the default, yeah. There we go, okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna run the game. HB for Hillbillies. Synergistic. That logo is pretty cool. I have to, I have to give, them, give them credit. They at least did a nice job with that logo. Beverly Hillbillies. Copyright 20th Century Fox, etc. Now, you might think that the game has crashed at this point. I mean, that's the point. But it's just like a little gimmick. It's a little gimmick. It, it looks like it threw you out to DOS, but... 
when I first saw that, it didn't fool me because I actually saw that the, the resolution was a little too low. I actually saw, oh wait, that's that's not really a DOS prompt. That's actually a DOS prompt being rendered in this game's 320 by 200 graphics mode. Just a little too chunky to be believable. Because the DOS prompt on DOS PCs of that time was actually higher resolution than this. So, you know, it's it's kind of cute. It's it's a little it's supposed to be a little cute and clever. It's like there's a little animated DOS prompt that all these people are fussing over like the, like it's a little house pet or something. And it's it's kind of cute. Okay. And I think maybe there's supposed to be an introduction, but for some reason it doesn't play on my copy of the game. I don't know why. It just sort of puts you here. And that's it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I mean, yeah, it's a mouse-driven game. You can click on things, like you can click on this door and go inside, and then we're here inside the house. But I can't seem to click on much. If I click on anything with either the left or the right mouse button, the game doesn't say anything. You see, so one thing that really annoys me about these games is they don't even have any in-game text, which is really just like, just blows me away. Like. It's a fundamental thing in adventure games that you would have, um, you know, you'd have um, messages, like like text uh, describing things. And, you know, people sometimes say that those messages are superfluous in graphic adventure games. I mean, you can see everything. You can see there's like a pot here, there's a door here, there's another pot here, there's like a, a fireplace here, there's a stove with a pipe coming out of it. Like you don't need the game to tell you there is a gray stove here with a pipe going through the ceiling. So some people would say, you know, it's kind of it's kind of superfluous to have those messages because a lot of adventure game communications and things like that are things which you can very clearly see. You don't need the game to tell you that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But still, I mean, you have, you have no text in this, or almost no text in this game. Like, you can't interact with anything here. I think I can pick up this, yeah, I can pick up this shotgun, and this here is a, yeah, gun shell. I can pick up these gun shells with the right mouse button. Um, but there's no, like, there's no... There's no communication of any kind. There's no, I mean, again, it would be kind of superfluous. Like, I can click on these things and just put them in inventory. And it's very clear to me that I've picked up a shotgun. I've picked up a couple of shot shells. The game doesn't need to tell me that. But still, it, it just really feels like there's something missing if there's no text in the game at all. Now, okay, fair enough. You can, um, if I, if I click on the lady here. Jen, one tarnation are you doing lollygagging around? Fetch us something for dinner. So, okay, there's some conversation. If you consider that conversation, it's like two sentences of text. If I click on the dog, I think, yeah, the dog wags his tail, look, looks at me and wags his tail. So you click with the right mouse button to interact with things, and you use the left mouse button to move around. But I can't do anything else with any of the other stuff here. I can't do anything with this rain barrel here. I can't do anything with this wheelbarrow. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like the game's kind of lacking in interaction, but okay, fair enough. So let's go ahead and take a walk through the forest. Now, when you see the graphics, your first inclination might be to say, you know what? It doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's a nice looking game. And I have to, I have to admit, it is kind of a nice a nice looking game. You know what? Sorry, I'm just going to I'm just going to quickly adjust my audio settings because it looks like Sorry, give me a second. So my audio OBS is indicating to me that my that my voice audio might be just a bit too loud. So let me do this. I don't know if my voice was too loud before, but I turned it down just a bit. Sorry if it was too loud. It's always hard for me to tell. I, I see the the audio meters there, but it's it's really hard to tell how it actually sounds in the in the video. Anyway, sorry. So what I was saying is, you know, it's a nice looking game. Like, you know, the graphics are certainly not bad. This is a very appealing looking sort of forest scene. And as you as you walk around, you know, you'll see different scenes like that, and you'll say, oh, you know, it looks it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty okay. And this game does the same sort of thing that a lot of games of that time did, and a lot, a lot of games of today still do. They try to look good. They try to have nice looking graphics, and they figure, okay, you know, if the graphics look good, that's that's enough. That will that will draw people in. That's all that people need. They don't need like a story. Who's going to read the story of a computer game anyway? People just play games to to kill things and and see nice stuff. It's just like sensory 
sensory overload stimulation just just st stimulate the senses and people be happy um so yeah i mean this is a very stimulating scene i like the graphics i really like the looks of this forest and you can't seem to do anything with this well either and if you try to click on it okay so this is another crazy thing like the way that the guy walks is pretty wacky like he will if you try to click on this well he does he does that so he has no idea what to do with the well. And if, it, if you click on it there, he walks up. Like, instead of doing anything with the well, he walks up off the top of the screen. And then if you click on with the, on the well with the right mouse button, then he also goes up the top of the screen. And you might have also noticed the way that he walks is kind of... Like, he, he sort of spins around in circles, which is kind of... Whoa. That bear... That bear started standing up on its hind legs. Like, I... You'd think the bear might attack you or something, or do something, but the bear just kind of stands there for a while, and then if you... Uh, Oh, I guess the bear killed me. Okay, I guess that's what happens when you die. Oh, he just says, oh, it was all a dream. It was all just a, a gold earned dream, and I woke up, and now I gotta fetch something for dinner. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, um, Pushing Up Roses, uh, whom some of you, probably many of you know, Pushing Up Roses is a YouTuber who uh, used to make game reviews, now mostly talks more about television shows, but uh, had many uh, good game reviews back in the day. Um, she absolutely ripped this game in her review. She reviewed this game and she said it really is one of the worst adventure games ever made. And I'm inclined to agree with her. Like, really... There's not a lot here. There's really, like, at the beginning, there's really not much you can do because it's just this. Like, it's literally just, just forest scene after forest scene. And you don't even get, like, the impression of... Now, you see that little creature running away? I guess it's a rabbit. That's basically the first puzzle. The first puzzle of the game is to get the rabbit to go to a particular place. And the rabbit just basically runs away from us. So what you need to do is uh, just kind of herd the rabbit along by coming in from the coming into the screen from the opposite direction of where you want the rabbit to go. Uh, and that's the first puzzle in the game. And it's, and yeah, but yeah, just the the way the guy moves is just so weird. Like the way, I mean, look, look at his, I tried to go up. And that's what he, he, do you see what happened? I clicked up here to go up and he just kind of spun around here, danced around a couple of times uh, or danced in circles a couple of times and then just stopped. Like he just kind of gave up and said, oh, I can't figure out how to get up there. I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit around and... Did I get stuck? I think I actually got... Oh, maybe I can still go this way? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, the movement in this game is terrible. Yeah, the character movement and pathfinding is terrible. And the animation... I mean, again, it looks good, but the animation is just weird the way he starts spinning around when you, when you try to get him to go different places. But okay, that's that in itself you can, I can live with. I can live with stuff like that. It's like, okay, it's that, that in itself is not a deal breaker. The animation, the movement, the pathfinding is kind of weird, but okay, fair enough. That's, you know, that's not... That doesn't ruin the whole game. It's just a little, a little odd. But what really just ruins the game for me is that, you know, there's there's... There's no interaction here. Like, there's nothing. There's no communication. There's really nothing but the experience of just... Oh, and that board, the wild boar just killed me now. Oh, I, I, it was another dream. It was, a, it were all a dream within a dream. The Matrix has to go deeper. Um, yeah, sorry, I know, I know I mixed up. Yeah, it's... No, we need to go deeper was Inception, not the Matrix. Sorry, I, I know. I just got... got I, I mixed them up for a second. Um... So, you know, you could, you could take a sort of divided opinion here and say, you know what, let's, let's look at the bright side. It's a nice looking game. The graphics are beautiful. The, the music's also kind of pleasant. There's a little musical sort of tune playing in the background. It's nothing super special, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's pleasant. I mean, it's, 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 it's serviceable. It's, no, it doesn't, uh, doesn't make your ears bleed. Um... But then there's just like there, there's no you have no clue what you're supposed to do. It, oh, there's a oh there's a person here. Hello. Howdy, Uncle Jed. Have you seen a bear? Yeah, a big old Bruin came running by so fast it done knocked my hat off. Still can't find it nowhere. Okay. Let me chat some more. Howdy, Uncle Jed. How do I catch a jackrabbit? 
That's easy, Uncle Jed. Everyone knows you can make it go you can make and go where you want if you come at him from different directions. Heck, he ain't nothing but a dumb old bunny. No match for genuine geniuses like us. Yeah, so so that really is the first puzzle of the game. Figure out where you need to get the bunny to go, and then yeah, just come at the bunny from the opposite. So if you if you want the bunny to go to the east, like like he did, you come at him from the west, like I did, and he just runs in the opposite direction. So you just kind of have to herd the bunny like that. It's not that difficult to do per se. Um, what is kind of difficult is figuring out where the bunny is supposed to go. So, okay, so there's like, but I mean, there's minimal dialogue, like, okay, there, we've seen a couple of lines of dialogue with a couple of different characters, um, but there's just, there's minimal interaction with the game, really, and, you know, later on, like, once you actually get the bunny to where you need him to go, then, like, the, the story sort of starts up, that's when the, the real story of the game starts up, and then there's more, maybe more going on, but I just, I don't know, I, uh... Yeah, the movement in this game is just so broken. Maybe it gets better. Oh, yeah, this is where you need to lead the rabbit. So basically you need to lead the rabbit to this screen. And once you do that, then the real game actually begins. Yeah, I mean... Again, you can look at the bright side. It's a nice-looking game. In terms of the presentation, it's not bad. Um... I've probably seen worse games in my life. Like, like, it may be an exaggeration to say it's the worst adventure game ever made. I think I can think of other games that would have a better claim to that title. But... It just, it really just doesn't have that certain sort of touch that you want to have in an adventure game, you know? It just, it just doesn't really grab you. It really just is, is very sort of, it kind of leaves you cold because there's just nothing really going on. Um, and the fact that, oh, oh, here's something at least. Can I, there we go, got another shotgun shale. Can we talk with this uh, young woman here? Howdy, Pa! How do I handle a bear? Why they go running if you fire off that big old shotgun? I guess what I should have done with a bear is shoot it with my shotgun, which I could have gotten from the house that I, where I got it the first time, but then didn't get it the next time because I died. Howdy, pa! How do I do with a boar? There's a bear and a boar. Oh, the answer is the same. I guess the boar will also go running if you fire off that big old shotgun. Okay. All right. Can I do anything with this? at all like i mean i guess this is a moonshine distillery but i can't seem to do anything with it at all it's just like there's yeah it's just like the interaction in this game is just so poor like there's nothing here there are a couple of people there are a couple of things but you just you can't do anything with them it's just it's just so disappointing i don't know man it just Let's see what do we have for options here music and sound oh yeah you can turn sound on but it doesn't actually seem to change anything like it doesn't actually it still doesn't play any sounds, as far as I can tell. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I don't think the game's maybe not... Maybe the game's not quite as bad as uh, as some people have said. But yeah, it's just it just doesn't really uh, inspire me at all. Uh, it's just... it's it, Yeah, it's, it's not a great game by any means. Um, I'm going to go ahead and quit. Yeah, that was Beverly Hillbillies, at least, the, like, the first few screens of it. Um, I don't know. I want to say bad things about it, but um, I think the game can kind of speak for itself. I mean, you've, you've seen it, you can kind of get an idea of what it's like. Anyway, I'm going to move on now. Uh, what are we doing next? I'm going to do Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's uh, Awesome Adventure, or... Uh, or whatever it's called. So, yeah, BT, Bill and Ted. Here we go. Uh, yes, I'll play with joystick. Level of play can be one because the higher levels are more difficult. You need six dudes for an A+. All right, press escape for done. Actually, I'm just curious. What happens if... Oh, I see. So at higher levels of play... So at levels two... So, so at level one, you need six dudes. At level two, you need 12 dudes. And then the numbers for three and four are the same, but I guess they're more difficult in some way. So I'll play on, I'll, I'll play on one because that's the easiest. I'll press escape for done. Oh yeah, and I couldn't get the sound to work properly on this. It sounds like... It sounds like it's trying to play Sound Blaster sound through an ad-lib card. It's barely audible, and what is audible really sounds like it's trying to play digitized audio through ad-lib. This game, I think this game has Sound Blaster support, but I couldn't figure out how to configure it. 
Anyway, yeah, this game was actually... So, okay, to be fair, this game was not made by Capstone. It was published by Capstone. It was, this game was made by Off the Wall Productions. Uh, yeah, excellent programming, triumphant sound, and bodacious graphics. Yeah, none of that is... Uh, in my opinion, none of that is accurate. The, the programming and the graphics and the sound are by no means uh, remarkable. Uh, let's go ahead and skip this. So, okay, so this is the story. Bill, Ted, this is really quite simple. You have flunked every section of this history class. Unless you get an A-plus on your final oral exam tomorrow, guys, I have no choice but to flunk the both of you. Now you know your topics. Beethoven, Billy the Kid, Joan of Arc, Socrates, Napoleon, Freud, Lincoln, Genghis Khan, Michelangelo, Antoinette, and Nero. Fellows, I suggest you cover at least those areas if you want to pass. Your report had better be something very, very special. Greetings, my excellent friends. Bill S. Preston, Esquire, Ted Theodore Logan. Je oh, I... Oh, I, sorry, I skipped that without being able to read it. Anyway, the, the book tells you that uh, something, you can do anything you want as long as you remember this. No matter what happens, you must get to that report. Now, most important, the clock in San Dimas is always running. Gentlemen, you're on your own. So, okay. Uh... Where there we go, there we are. So these, so I'm you control these two guys using the arrow keys or the numeric keypad if you wish to make them go diagonally, and yeah, that's them. It's it's Bill and Ted from the Bill and Ted movie. Um, one thing which I forgot to mention maybe is uh, all these games are based on uh, then popular media franchises. They're all based on like movies which were um, which were popular at that time. Well, except uh, one's based on a TV show, but I think the rest of these are all based on movies which were popular at that time. Um, so, yeah, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Now, I have never seen this movie, so I don't really know the plot very well, but I guess it involves time travel with that phone booth. Just before I go into the phone booth, you can actually... It's not really apparent. Like, the, the animation here is, is... like Or the... Not just the animation, but, like, the perspective is so bad. It looks like they're literally walking on top of this building. Um, but that door there, if you go up here... You can go inside, and this is like a little convenience store. Uh, I don't know if you can do anything here, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, look look at the end. Like, they, they just clip right on top of this ice chest there. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, this is this game is so low effort. It's just kind of sad. Um, how do I get out of here? Come on. There's like I know there's an exit down here. Where there's supposed to be. There we go. Okay, so what you do is you go into the phone booth here, and you dial a number. Now, again, I've not seen Bill and Ted's... I, I've not seen the movie this is based on, so I don't really know the plot very well, but I guess there's some kind of time travel involved. And I don't know if this is the gimmick in the movie, but at least in the game, um, what you do is you dial a number here. You dial a four-digit four digit number, but... What you're dialing is not, you're not actually dialing a telephone call. You, the, the phone booth is a teleporter, or uh, not, not just a teleporter, but a time machine. It will actually take you to the year that you put in. So, like, if I put in, I don't know, 0000, you get this little animation. And it actually takes us to the year zero. This is the year zero that we're in. Now, not all years work, as you saw, one, two, three, four doesn't work. The game has a fairly limited number of years that it can actually take you to, uh, or will take you to. But, um, yeah, and that guy at the beginning, I think that guy whom we saw at the beginning said something like, the, the book will tell you all the numbers you need to know. I'm guessing that's probably some kind of copy protection. So I don't really know the whole deal with this game. I almost feel like this game is kind of like a... Almost like it's trying to be an educational game. Like maybe it's trying to teach you about history. Because the, the guy, that history teacher mentioned um, different characters. And if you look at the right-hand side, see under dudes there? Those are actually the, the people whom we need to, uh, to meet. So the, the gimmick of the game is you're not just doing like a history report. You're not just, just like writing a report on these characters. You actually need to go and get these characters. And that's like the, the very special thing that you do to win the game. You actually get Napoleon and Abraham Lincoln and Cleopatra and Freud and all these people. And you actually bring them into the present. And I guess you're supposed to present them to your history teacher and he's like wow i'm really impressed you actually brought these people into the classroom so you get an a plus because you didn't just write about napoleon you you brought napoleon into 
our present day from the past. And anyway, so um, I kind of wonder if maybe, maybe the game is supposed to be like an educational game, teaching you history and telling you like the different years that you need to go to. But um, what you can do, of course, is just uh, just look up the years on, just look up a walkthrough for this game and you'll find the years that you need to go to. So like, for example, just totally randomly, let's go to the year 1810. How about that? So I'll say 18... 10 and that brings us to all right here we are those are pretty flowers so what you do so the game will tell you when there's like a there's something you can pick up so you walk here and i think you press um yeah you press insert to pick up things and so you can see on the left i have uh if i press escape here or space, oh, press space. So you see here on the left, I have these flowers. So there you go. Um, so yeah, this guy here is, actually, I don't even know who this is. Is this, it's probably Beethoven, but I don't know why, I, I don't know why Beethoven has a poster of Elvis on his wall. Is that Elvis? I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Elvis. I think Elvis uh, was born long, long after Beethoven died. But uh, anyway, but I guess this is supposed to be Beethoven. We're supposed to get Beethoven to come with us somehow. We're supposed to convince him to come with us. Uh, but we'll have to do that later. And let's go back in the phone booth. And where else can we go? So that was, I think that was Beethoven or some other similar, I mean, obviously a <laughs> musician. It, it must have been Beethoven. Who else would it be? Um, so let's see. Let's go back to uh, 1209. The game does the year 1209. So... 1209. And that takes us to, well, the year 1209. So we're somewhere in uh, East Asia, obviously. And this is, I guess this is supposed to be Genghis Khan, or Genghis Khan, as some people call him. Yeah, I don't think we can do much here now. I guess I guess I guess what you need to do is you need to attract people. Like basically, for each person, there's some something that you need to give them. You need to find like the different inventory items and give them to people, and that will then inspire them to come with you. So you need to find somebody who likes flowers, and then uh, and then uh, you know give them the flowers, and they'll say, "Oh, I want to come with you because you uh, you gave me nice flowers." Okay, so if we go back considerably farther in time now, let's see. Uh, the game will do the year. 10, I think. So zero, zero, one, zero. Let's try this. Yeah, that looks like it's working. Okay, just a caveman. How did a calculator get here? So you go into the calculator, press, uh, press insert. Come on. There we go. And we picked up the calculator. Some other's a calculator in the year 10. Who knows how or why? So yeah, I don't think we can do anything with this, with this caveman. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is pretty much the whole game. Like, you've already seen pretty much the whole deal of the game. You just, you go to different places, pick up different things, and then you uh, just kind of figure out um, who wants what. Find find people who like different things, and then, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, let's see. So, like, if we go now to the year, I think we can go now to the year 1915, because I think I know who likes the calculator. Wilbur Hall, science. Yeah, so let's like, let's go into the science area here. We, uh, so I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Einstein. Because, yeah, it's like the year 1915, science lab and university seems seems logical. I mean, yeah, I think this is probably supposed to be Einstein. Let's see, how do I, I think I need to give Einstein the calculator. How do I do this? Do I? Ah, okay, you do that. You press space to go into the inventory on the left, and then you press enter when you're on the item that you want to give. So you press enter on the calculator, and now Einstein says, Das ist gut. Now I can balance mein Checkbook. Very good, yes. Oh, and Einstein comes with us. So, so now Einstein walks with us. He, he, he is persuaded to come with us to the future because uh, we gave him the calculator, and das ist gut. So uh, let's go ahead and go into the phone booth. And we go back to the present, which at the time of this game's making was the year 1990. Oh, this game's like 31 years old. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, and that takes us to the San Dimas Mall. And now Einstein goes inside. This is basically what you do. You, you collect people 
inside the San Dimas Mall. So An Einstein's now sitting here just chilling out in the San Dimas shopping mall. It's Missy calling. Do you want to go to school? Uh, tell her yes or no. Uh, uh, sure, yes. Oh, I guess that's Missy. Introducing Albert Einstein. Well, boys, I know you couldn't do it. I must fail the both of you. Oh, okay. I guess going to school means you're done. Like when you when you think you're finished, you go to school, and that's your. Uh... Okay, so one of us ended up working at a burger joint, and one of us went to the Alaskan Military Academy. Well, that's not so bad, is it? Okay, so that's yeah. That's basically the idea of, of the game. So you just have to do that. So, I mean, the guy's not impressed. We, we got Albert Einstein. We literally got Albert Einstein into our school, and that's not impressive enough to to, uh, to get us a... Well, anyway, okay. So you get the idea. That's the game. You find things that people might like. You give them to these different historical figures, and then you... Um, you... Uh, yeah, you... Um, get them to come to your school, and then if you get enough people to come to your school, then you pass. That's that's basically the game. Kind of a cool game, kind of a cool premise. There's not much to the game. Um, I mean, it doesn't control very well. Uh, at some points in the game, you need to jump, and I, I actually haven't figured out how you jump. There must be some key that jumps, but I haven't figured out what it was. Um, other than that, I mean... You, you saw most of it. One thing which I will share, which I thought was very amusing, um, one of the people you need to pick up is Socrates, and so you go to, you, you go to, um, you go to uh, ancient Greece, you meet Socrates, and Socrates gives you a riddle. Socrates' riddle that he gives you is, who is wiser than Socrates? And, hmm, well, you know, you, you kind of think about it, maybe, but you can't, you can't just think the answer, you have to get the answer. So you go to, you go to somebody else, and they give you the answer, and the answer actually shows up in your, in your inventory as an inventory item. And then you go back to your, uh, you go back to Socrates, and you give him the answer, and the answer is, no one is wiser than Socrates. And then the game says, ooh, Socrates likes your answer and agrees to follow you. So that, that answer pleases Socrates. No one is wiser than Socrates. I thought that was kind of amusing. Anyway, moving on. So that's, you know... <sighs> Once you get, once you figure it out, once you figure out the, the 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 mechanic of using the phone booth to time travel, and once you know which years you can go to, like you actually, you really do do need a list of years. I'm wondering if that's the copy protection. I'm wondering if maybe the manual that came with the game has like a list of all the years you can go to, and that's the what the guy was talking about at the beginning of like the the book will give you the number or something. Um, if you actually have a list of the years that you can go to and you understand how the game plays and works, then it's not that bad. You could, you could have, I mean, I had a little bit of fun with it. It's, you can play it through fairly quickly once you figure out what you're supposed to do, but it's not bad. And like I said, I think it's supposed to be like, like a, very, a very light sort of education game, a little bit of history, a little bit of figuring out different, you know, historical figures and kind of what years they lived in and stuff like that. So not bad, uh, not, not a great game by any means, but not, not too bad. Okay, moving on from there, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is let's move on to, yes, Homie D. Clown. Now... Let's see, sound configuration, uh, I'll do Sound Blaster is four. Music, let's do Sound Blaster, which is now three. I'll press return, and okay, I think we are ready to play. Let's play Homie the Clown, because Homie played that. So, Homie. Homie D. Clown, who was a character from In Living Color, which was a, yeah, Fox TV series. Um, This is the kind of thing which you probably would not see on television today. It's a little bit... Um, I, should I say racist? I don't know if racist is the right word. It's, I mean, kind of stereotypical. You play a clown who is played by a black actor or African-American actor or whatever. And it's like, it's, it's a one joke game. The joke is he's a black clown. That's like, that's the whole joke. And that's it. You, you, you got the joke now, you, you understand everything. Um, so what you'll probably notice is this game uses the same engine as the Beverly Hillbillies, and it has the same problem. Like there's, there's hardly any text. Like you can talk to this guy here. Hey homie, your agent Polly called. 
Our Topos Productions wants to feature a clown in his own TV show. He said it'll be a six-figure salary and all the perks of stardom. You know, the kind they don't give you around here. Seems it's down... Seems it's down to either you or Klutzo, the clown on that stupid Saturday morning kids show. Anyway, they want to see you at their office in costume by the end of the day. So, do we say what's the dude's phone number? So you haven't sent a meeting, my man, or call me up and send a limo to pick me up in my customary style. I'll just say what's the guy's phone number. Yo, what, what do I look like, a secretary? Your phone messages are on the board. Yeah, okay, okay. Alright, so we've got a telephone here. I can click on the telephone to get a 50 cent piece. But don't be fooled, you can click on it again to get another 50 cent piece. No, you can't click on it a third time. Or you can, but it doesn't do anything. Show's over, homie. What are you still here for? Um, have you seen my wallet? You got something to put in a wallet? Why, yes I do, sir. I keep it in my wallet for, uh, for emergencies. I like to hang out and reminisce at the scene of my media triumphs. Yeah, right, you got evicted again, didn't you? All right, let's see. So, yeah, I mean... Okay, so we've got a note here. And a note two. And a note three. And a note four. All right. Homie, while you're out, come to our office one block east, two blocks north on northeast corner. Okay. What about note two? Need you ASAP at the Brewbaker building. Number three... Meet me at the hot dog stand, Polly. And four. We're at first in Lincoln. Come soon. Okay. So if I walk out, I'm using the uh, the, the numeric keypad to move homey. Yeah, there we go. So we're outside now. So this game, uh, it's kind of a fully realized city. Like you you have the whole city map, and you can kind of walk around the whole city map, but you really can't because the game walls you off in a lot of ways, like with these traffic cones. I mean, in real life, obviously, you could just easily step over those traffic cones. But, of course, in this game, they're an impassable obstacle. It's the game's way of saying you can't go that way. And the game also blocks you off in this really hokey way with a lot of people. The game likes to do this where, like, see this guy just kind of follows me wherever I go? Now, in this case, I can easily just outrun him and go above him like this. But there are situations where you can't so easily get around people. So, uh, anyway, yeah. And you can see, if you're not familiar with the character of Homie D. Clown, he carries, like, a black sock in his right hand. And I think he has, like, a tennis ball or something in the sock. So he uses it, he uses it to whack people. You know, the kind of sort of sock weapon, like a sock with something in it that used to hit people? And that's sort of his whole gimmick, his whole shake. Like, he hits, pe he hits people with a sock, and he says, I don't think so. Homie, don't play that. And that's, again, that, that's, that's the whole joke. The character was very one-dimensional. Um, uh, probably meant more to people who watched In Living Color back in the day. Maybe those people really enjoyed this game, but... I mean, it's not a horrible game. At least, compared to the Beverly Hillbillies, at least the control is controllable. Like, you, you can actually move the guy around, and he actually, like, faces where he's going and responds to the controls. But then you have the problem, like, there are all these people blocking your way. And, like, a lot of people will just Im impede you and say, you know, you can't get past me. And then there are people like this guy who tries to mug you. Hey, clown, give me your wallet. <laughs> well, I guess one shot wasn't enough. I'll go get another. So basically, yeah. So whenever you die or get attacked or whatever, you end up in the hospital here. So it, it's it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto again. You Like, you go to the... You go to the hospital when you get hurt, and they just resume the game from the hospital. So you, you, see, you have these two people here who are just blocking me, like I can't really get past them. Do some tricks for us, homie. So what shall we say? I don't think so. Yeah, they actually have like little digitized voice samples from the show. Do some tricks for us, homie. Homie, don't play that. That's right, homie, don't play that. And finally, homie, don't make no fool out of himself. That is right. You tell him, homie. You tell the world. All right. So yeah, we can't get past those guys. Uh, I don't know if we like if we need to use something. Oh, 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 oh. Who are these people? Uh oh, this could be bad. Uh, this could be problematic. What's going on here? Uh, my boss Klutzo the Clown is going to get that Archer Boys contract. If you interfere, we'll beat the stuffing out of you. Well, I didn't interfere, but they beat the stuffing out of me anyhow. So, 
and we end up right back where we were in front of the hospital again. So yeah, I mean, th that's this is basically the game. Like, you need to avoid getting caught by those people. You need to um, f get to the places where... I mean, like, in those notes that we read, like, the, the game gives you locations to go to and stuff like that. Like, we're here at the, we're at the corner of, I guess, Adams Street, and what's the other street? What's the street that we're on here? I don't know. This is... Okay, I was looking for a street name, but that's like some finger pointing at a... Are those railway tracks? Is this saying the, the railway? Oh yeah, subway. Okay, so we can go to the subway here. And then... Yeah, like I need some... I think I need something to get inside. Like I need some subway token or something. Or actually, can I just use this coin? Can I just put the 50 cent piece in? Can I go to the guy? Oh. Would you like a token, sir? One dollar each. Oh, okay, I get it. So, 50 cents and 50 cents. There we go. And I got a subway token. Okay, nice. I can put the sub... Okay, there we go. We're in the subway now. Okay, nice. Lincoln. Okay. Do I get out of Lincoln? I don't know where to get off. I don't have a map of this. I don't know the different subway stops here. Oh, Washington. Okay. So, it's like... You get the idea. I mean, this is basically the game. It's it's kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies in that, it, I mean, again, it uses the same engine, obviously. Um, it has the same problem. There's, there's not much text. Like, there's very little text. It's mostly just walking around and picking up stuff. You know, the usual adventure paradigm of pick up everything that's not nailed down. Roosevelt, all these places are obviously named after uh, U.S. presidents. Um, it's not a terrible game, I guess. It's not much fun. Um, it probably would be more enjoyable if you had a map. I don't know if the game originally came with a map. You could, of course, draw a map. If you, if you, if you like doing that kind of thing, you know, some people like drawing adventure game maps. I usually do, but somehow this, this game just doesn't inspire me to draw a map because the exploration in the game is so, um... I really dislike it when games discourage exploration, like when they do stupid things to discourage you from walking around and exploring the, the, the map. And the way this game does that with, with those random people just blocking your way and you can't get past those people, that's really, for me, that's really a turnoff. It's like, I don't want to just, you know, explore this this very restricted sort of Walden place. I like, you know, I mean, there's a reason why games like Grand Theft Auto and all these other sort of big sandbox games have become really popular because people like to explore places like that. People like to explore these big open environments. Now, I realize, of course, at the time this game came out in the early 1990s, that to technology wasn't really there to make a big open environment like that. P computers didn't have enough space, didn't have enough memory to really uh, simulate a huge, open, rich environment like that. So, you know, it was partly a matter of technology. Um, so, you know, you, you can't necessarily blame this game too much for, you know, for coming out when it did. I mean, it was a product of its time. But it's just, I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's much fun. Can I get out here? There we go. Where are we here? Uh, if we go outside now... Wow, this place looks really run down. Um, where am I going? I don't even know where I'm... I have no idea where I'm going. Like, I really I really don't know this game. Okay, police officer. Oh, now the police officer's blocking me. And it's just... It's so contrived the way they do this, because it's like... They, they don't come up to you, they just walk in in a line like that so as long as you stay away from them they stay away from you but if you try to go up to them hey fella got any donuts okay come on that's just a bit uh, yeah i mean the game is obviously very stereotypical like it, i mean homie is a very stereotypical sort of black character and everybody's just sort of like yeah the cops want donuts and and who's this guy oh another mugger hey clown give me your wallet Well, yeah, okay. All right. Um, that's Homie to Clown. I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. Again, it, it looks okay. Like, the graphics are not bad. Well, they're kind of monotonous because it's mostly just, like, these streets. So there's really not even... There's not a lot of variety to these graphics. Um, sound isn't much to speak of. But, I mean, it's it's kind of... It's it's sort of a, an artifact of that funky sort of early '90s time when stuff like this was uh, was a thing. I don't know. If I had to rate it, I would give it a solid four out of ten. 
Not the worst game I've ever seen, but not something that I'd want to play for like a, a really long period of time. All right, so if I click on, see, these are options. Yeah, th these are the same options we saw in, the, in Beverly Hillbillies, music and sound, and then here we can quit. All right, there we go. So that was Homey D Clown. I mean, yeah, it's it is what it is. If you don't get, if you don't find it too um, too racist, then okay, it's. It's, it's okay. It can be a little bit of fun. Okay, and now for the last game. So, I think put in W World. Yeah, so let's see. Go ahead and do WW Configuration. So, I will again choose Sound Blaster at default settings, which is 3. Sound Blaster Pro, let's say, which is 4. All right, let's give that a try. So, WW, what is this? This is something from Paramount. And... Capstone, the pinnacle of entertainment software. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of an overdone slogan. Their, their software really wasn't uh, wasn't necessarily that great, but uh, yeah. Yeah, all right, like, shit, you know what, I'm gonna... I'm mental or anything, so don't be afraid. My name is Wayne, and this is Garth. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to skip this intro. Extreme close-up! Yeah. Can I skip this? I'm trying to skip this, and the game doesn't seem to want me to... Come on. All right, here we go. All right, so um, I'm just a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried about copyright because you know, obviously, this is a copyrighted franchise. I'm um, hoping that, hoping I don't get dinged for this. Um, so, I will say, of all the things that we've seen here in this video, this is the only franchise which I'm really familiar with. Um, I, I haven't. I haven't actually seen either of the Wayne's World movies. I didn't. I didn't watch a lot of movies when I was a kid. Um, just wasn't the thing that I did. But I. I did watch a fair amount of TV. I did see. I've seen pretty much. I think all of the Wayne's World episodes on Saturday Night Live, which is of course its origin. Wayne's World started as a recurring skit on Saturday Night Live before it turned into a couple of movies. Uh, and I, so I'm familiar with that in that sense. Like I think I've seen all of those. So yeah. And I mean, I, I know the the the, the normal sort of catchphrase is like swing and yeah not and uh, yeah and what you know i mean i mean, I, I get it like okay i get the whole wayne's world thing this is the one thing which i kind of am familiar with um so quit quits the game but exit exits this this menu so i didn't watch the whole int introduction so I, I we didn't really experience the whole story but i'm, I'm just going to skip the story for now so this beginning is kind of annoying this, this beginning is is really um like you have to first say let's get a pizza and think about it and then wayne gets a great idea hey pizza yeah l l let's let's have a pizza thon and then you have to say like, oh wayne like, wh what is what is it is that like a telethon yeah we'll have people call in and order pizza from us which will sell for outrageous charitable donations cool oh that's dark and garth speaking uh, Wayne, how do you make pizza? You dial up the pizza parlor and say, Yo, I'd like a pepperoni pizza, pronto. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's how you make it. Party on, pizza person. That's how you make pizza, yes. Oh, I see your point. We'll need some help. Let's make a list to get organized. So this part's kind of annoying because you just have to keep clicking on the things in this list until the game lets you continue. So, like, definitely have to have Jerry Lewis. Maybe not. Sure, not. We'll need our parents' permission. Pshaw! We need phone volunteers and delivery people. Most most of the things Wayne just says, that's a good idea, Garth. So we just we just click through different things and just says, yeah, that's a good idea, Garth. We'll have to, we'll have, to have a lot of dough. Har har, Garth. Very funny. Not. Nah. How about a comedian? That's a good idea, Garth. Yeah, really cool music act. We need a government permit. No way! We're capitalists! Electronic totals board. That's a good idea, Garth. We we'll need some advertising. Good idea, Garth. Yeah, like, you, you just have to click all... The, and, like, these recur. Like, I already said the thing about Jerry Lewis. You just you just click these until until the game decides that you've clicked enough. So this this first part is kind of annoying. Uh, need to make place make all this pizza... I'm in a pepperoni farm. 
I think pepperoni mostly grows in, grows mostly in the south. Uh, a lot more video equipment than we have here. I like to watch magicians. Come on, man. Can I just please... Well, let's get started then. Okay, finally. Excellent! Yeah! Party on, Garth! Party on, Wayne! Come on, guys. Gonna... Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the game. So it uses a sort of LucasArts style kind of thing where you have this, this tool right here at the bottom. Interestingly enough, you can switch between the characters using this icon here on the left. So like right now I'm controlling Wayne. Like if I click Wayne moves around and Garth follows him. If I click here, it switches. So now I'm controlling Garth. And now Garth walks around and Wayne follows him. So it's like, okay, cool. Um, so you, yeah, you can pick up things, look at things, use things, talk to, push, pull, extreme close up of. We can give, open, and close. So, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I don't know. The extreme close-up doesn't seem to work. Even if you say extreme close-up of Garth, it says, I don't think that would help. Like, like all they did was extreme close-ups of themselves. They didn't do extreme close-ups of anything else. But it doesn't, like, the game doesn't want to do an extreme close-up of Garth or Wayne for some reason. Like, if I, if I switch to Garth, I can say do extreme close-up of Wayne, but... It doesn't want to do that. I don't know why. Anyway, but you can look at things. So this this is more like a proper adventure game. You can look at stuff. I can say, look at the couch. It's the centerpiece for Wayne's World. You can look at the chair. For, it's for guests. You can look at the camera. It's the only one we have. Look at the cue cards. It's for the show. And I think they say, like, the two characters say different things. Like if, I, if I switch to Garth and say, Garth, look at, this, look at the couch. Mmm, still has that greasy pizza stain on it. The hot seat. Where we ask the tough questions. Whoa, it's kind of like an eye staring back at me. Cue cards in case Wayne forgets his lines, but I never do. <laughs> yeah, so so they get so each character like they they're like different characters. They have different lines. They do different stuff. Um, so okay, so it's cool. So it's like here's a guitar. I can say look at the guitar. It's a Stradivarius 9000 with twin mounted struts. And I can I think I can pick it up. My baby! I never leave home without it. So, this is more like a real adventure game. I mean, you get, you know, the usual descriptions of things. There's like, there's cool one-liners and witty conversation between Wayne and Garth. If I want to go upstairs, I can say, I have to say, you can't just walk up the stairs, you have to say, use stairs, and then, there we go. Let me get to the city maps. Like, we, we can go to West Aurora, we can go downtown, we can go to... Butterfield, Southeast Aurora, Stonebridge. Let's go to downtown. I come from downtown. So you can go to the Junk Mart. You can go to City Hall. You can go to Unemployment Office. Let's go to City Hall because we can't fight it. All right, so we're here at City Hall. We, we can go inside. We can, like, walk around. We can walk back here. What do we have here? We have... Actually, there's not much. There's a door. It's closed. Can we op open door? Oh, it's locked. Okay. Uh, there's not much else here right now. All right, can we... Okay, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, you have to say use elevator. So, okay, I think it's probably apparent by now just from looking at this, it's not the world's best adventure game. Like, just looking at this, you can see, yeah, it's kind of mediocre. It's like, yeah, you know, it looks pretty cool. Like, the graphics are kind of cool. S setting seems kind of lighthearted and upbeat. Seems like it's kind of fun. But is it a great game? No, it's it's not a great game. Oh, we can go to Mayor Buckley's house. Oh, I guess it's, there's Mayor Buckley. Hi, Wayne. Hello, Goth. You'd better not come in. I think I've caught a summer flu bug. Uh, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna have a pizza thon. What's that? We want to have a pizza thon where people can make donations and get a pizza. The proceeds would be used to ben to supplement the city budget. So if we raise fifty thousand dollars, can we keep community access? That would work. I really don't know of any other way. The city budget is in dire straits, which reminds me. You'd better get going. I have work to do. Okay, later. Schwing! I don't think they got very aroused by by the mayor. I just like to say schwing because, you know, I mean, Wayne's World was always fun. You know, it's 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 fun. It's it's 
it's very stupid, it's very lowbrow, but it's it's something you can have fun with. And you can say Schwing and Schwa and whatever else. Like or not Schwa, but Schia. <laughs> Schia, right. And monkeys might fly out of my butt. Whoa. It's it's very stupid. Again, it was very much a product of its time, just like all these games. But it is something that at least, you know, again, it's it's something that I was familiar with as a kid, so it's something that I can quote a little bit. I don't know what this here is supposed to be. This here is Channel 35 Public TV Studio. I don't know why this doesn't light up. Can't seem to go there, at least not right now. But uh, yeah, here we go. So we have so we're at the TV studio here, and there are people demonstrating here. What are these people demonstrating about? Talk to protesters. Television has to go. Why? Because we told you so. Um. Gosh. I usually hate it when people do this. Like I, I really hate protests of almost any kind because I usually don't find them very useful. But I think f for once in my life, I might have to agree with these protesters. But that's just my opinion. Um, anyway, so yeah, we can go inside the front door there. Yes, we can. Hey, uh, we're inside the studio. Pictures. Look at the pictures. Hmm, the Channel 5 news team. They're total dweebs. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so, you get the idea. It's it's a real adventure game. In comparison to the other three games that I've shown in this video, this is a real adventure game with real sort of adventure gamey settings. It has real adventure gamey text and dialogue and puzzles and things like that. It's not a great game. It's not going to win any awards for best in any kind of category. But it's fun. It's, it's fun. It's cool it, it has nice graphics it has kind of a funky sort of sound like kind of ad-lib soundtrack as a lot of these games had what more do you want you know like i had some fun with this game i've played this game before i never finished it i actually never finished this game but i, I did play this game before when i was a kid i remember it being you know fun it's it's fun and what more do you want from a game you, you have some fun with it. you play the game you you enjoy it you know what what else do you want um so i would definitely say this this game is the best out of the games that i've shown here definitely um, the other games, yeah, Homie D Clown is like, yeah, not that great, but yeah, you could have some fun with it. Bill and Ted's Adventure, uh, excellent adventure, it's like, yeah, okay, you could play it for 10 minutes and see like the different places and meet the different historical figures, and it's like, yeah, it's okay, it's, it's not terrible. And then Beverly Hillbillies is just like, yeah, nah, nah, yeah, nah. Anyway, I think I'm done here. I think I have successfully portrayed and communicated the spirit of these games to you folks. So yeah, this has been four games by Capstone, all based on popular media franchises, or what were popular media franchises in the early 1990s. Um, I hope that this has been sort of a, you know, a bit of a walk down memory lane for some of you guys. Those people of you who are old enough to remember Wayne's World and Homie D Clown and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and all this stuff. If, if you're old enough to remember this, then probably this is a little bit of nostalgia. And if not, if you're younger than that, you, you know, you, you didn't grow up with those things, then hopefully this is a little bit of a time capsule, you know, kind of looking back at what games used to be like back then and what, and what. TV and movies were like back then, because it was obviously a very different time from today. It was a little more, um, th there were certain things you could do back then that you couldn't do now, and vice versa. I guess there are probably some things you can do now that you couldn't do back then, so you know, it's kind of like give and take. That's always how culture works. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying, not saying that, uh, necessarily it was better then, but, uh, but it was better then. I think, actually, objectively, the 90s were better than, than today. Uh, well, of course, that's just my opinion, but I say objectively, but of course, it's, it's my subjective opinion. But anyhow, anyhow, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, look forward to making more videos in the future. But for now, this has been four games from Capstone. Four uh, kind of kind of B quality at best games from Capstone, but four, still four adventure games nonetheless from Capstone. So again, thanks for watching everyone. I had a lot of fun making this video despite the games not being, you know, not the best, but still, again, you know, these are fun. These are the kind of games I like. Fun little silly sort of games that you can just have fun with and not take too seriously. So I hope, again, I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you folks later. Bye-bye for now.